Hey everybody, welcome back to Something Else Amiga. My name's Chris and this is kind of what I do. Today on the channel we have an Amiga 500 Plus with no battery damage, thankfully. Well, it's been fixed. And we're going to be doing some upgrades to it. What the heck can you do to an Amiga 500? Well, we're going to get into that right now. Now, this right here is a standard Amiga 500. You find them left and right. Her key tops are as yellow as a traffic signal. This here is a Revision 5. It's a 1 meg OCS machine. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to show you the difference between the Amiga 500 and the Amiga 500 Plus. Here on the screen we have an Amiga 500 1 megabyte with an 8372A 1 megabyte Agnes. Uh, 880k floppy. This was made in 1988. It also has the Sorden 1 meg expansion without a clock on it. This model does require the bodge wire from pin 1 to 31 to use a newer ROM on this machine. It's weird. This is a Kickstart 204 ROM, NTSC, and pretty much standard, standard, standard. 512k here, one, uh, 512k here, jumper slice on this board, and a solder blob near the ROM over here to make it the 1 meg. Well, I do have, currently you're going to see this Molex to Berg. I'm just using a splitter because I didn't have a cable. So I went to Amiga Kit and I bought uh, this. This is just the cable, but there's a slight problem. Yeah, guys, it doesn't reach. It doesn't even come close to reaching at all. So if you could fix that. That would be great. Uh, yeah, this can't, can't make it. It doesn't matter what way you go. It's just... Uh, okay, so after my daughter literally scared the living crap out of me coming down sneaking up when I was singing a song about I hate being old, I was putting the 500 regular back together. So this is the 500 plus. We still have the original styrofoam. The power supply is not in here because of course this was, is a PAL unit. So ever so carefully, I'm going to slide her out of the foam and get the box out of the way because it is quite large. You can still see the original wedge shape of the foam. It's still in great shape. And I really try to cherish each and every Amiga. This has its original bag. And here we go. This is the Amiga 500 Plus. It is no uh, physical size dimensions different, but it is different. Well, first off, on the badge, you're going to have a green power light and a, uh, your drive light, orange, of course. But this one says A500 Plus. So all the A500 Pluses, my A500 just has this. Boop, chicken lips, which is on the right over here. And the A500 Plus does say full Commodore. A500 Plus with the Amiga Emboss logo. So they do have a different case. Dimension-wise, they're the same. This, for me, is... Shift 3. This, for me, in America, where Jesus lives, is Shift 2. And, you know, we have, my quote is normally here, where your quote is here. You're all backwards. It's wrong. Anywho, why didn't they use the extra keys for your goofy stuff? Let's look at the back. On the back, we have a busted warranty seal. Oh, go figure. Um, the slice on the original Commodore one at the top. This has an A500 UK. And it does say made in the Philippines, 17441. Attempt repair by unauthorized persons, voids warranty. I'm authorized. So this unit also has Phillips screws where mine has Torx T10. Alright, so this also has had its shielding removed for simplicity. I'm going to go ahead and remove the keyboard. Now, this one has the same stuff. The Amiga 500 Plus came with a battery backed up clock. You're thinking, geez Louise, that looks like Dookie. It's just solder mask. It's been cleaned, it's been deboogered, and everything is functional. Now, what's different? So, the Amiga 500 Plus, whoa! The Amiga 500 Plus is a full ECS machine. What does that mean? It gives you the more screen modes that no one uses? I don't know why these chips are so sought after. It doesn't do anything better. 
68,000, same ROM. I'm running a, what is this? Uh, 205 in this one. Yes, I kept a workbench too. But here is the neat thing about the Amiga 500 Plus. We have normal 256KX4 RAM, so we don't need 16 of them to get 512K. You can put a thing in here and get one meg, but it gets even better. Look at this, Agnes. That is an 8375 VBB. Pin compatible with the 8372B from the Amiga 3000. Keep that in mind, guys. If you got a VBB chip and you have a 3000, you can simply plop that bad boy into your Amiga 3000 or 3000 tower. And where the NTSC PAL jumper is, you put a something 110 nanofarad uh, ceramic capacitor instead of a jumper, and it flips the voltage, does some science, and it works. How do I know that? Oh, there's a 3000 tower video that may or may not have come out yet. That covers that. Go check that out. And if I haven't released it yet, stay tuned. This is a 1 meg expansion from Sorted that I have in the exact same other unit. Great. Thanks, Sorted. Sorted.ie. Uh, I think it was just like uh, 20 bucks. Amigastore.eu sells this hoss. This is 2 megs. Because that's a 2 meg Agnes, you get your extra megabyte. So 512, 512, and then a 1 megger. So 512 on the board, 512 completion of your 1 meg, and then an additional 1 meg. So you now have 2 megabytes of RAM. Well, this has all sorts of things on it that I have no idea what it is. A500 trapdoor memory expansion. It has a spot for a battery, right? 2032 cell with the Amiga thing logo. It also has the RTC uh, 62423 slot. It looks like this does a hell of a lot more than what it says it does. On the back it says configurations Amiga 500 1 meg, Amiga 500 plus 1 meg, Gary adapter 2 meg. And it has a switch and disable for chip RAM and there's a bunch of stuff on here that I have no idea. So I'm just going to plug it in and see what the hell happens. And that oh, way I can see the lights. Here we go. Low, high, floppy. Do I get a display? Yes, I do. 2.0 ROMs. Hey, it works. I don't feel like booting an actual disc. So I'm going to knock everything on the floor and I'm going to grab the GoTech from underneath. Make sure you have everything right in the way and all over the place so your tools are everywhere. So we're going to boot a Mega Test Kit. What do we get for chip RAM? I don't know. Well, let's see. This is a 50 hertz pow memory, hot diggity dog. I did absolutely smurfly nothing and boop, cool. What can you do with that? A hell of a lot more than you can do with a 512K Amiga 500. That was easy. There's some other options on that board that I don't know about. So it's picking up the clock chip off of the Amiga 500 Plus. Yes, remember this thing had a battery, so it does have the capability of being 1978. Belly Slot Edition also has provisions for a battery, but it does not have a clock chip installed. That is cool. Two megs of chip. I didn't have to do any jumpers, I didn't have to do anything, it's seeing the whole shabizzle. What that means is, I could actually boot a workbench. Now without modification, a standard Amiga 500, with even a one megabyte Agnes, you're going to have 512k of total RAM. There we go. Kickstart 2. So, if you have uh, like an older 500, you can, if you didn't do the slices or jumpers on your board, have 512, 512 for your 1 meg. But this gives me, hate that backdrop, 2 megs of chip right off the fly. And that's the faster of the RAM, I guess. What can I do? Nothing. Now, the real test. Because no matter what Amiga I run, it never works. I have this on floppy disk. Amiga 500s are the only ones that seem to run it. Every single Amiga 500 can run this demo. This is state of the art from Spaceballs. Why do you use this demo versus so many others? Well, this thing will give your floppy drive a run for the money. So if you've cleaned your floppy drive and lubed the rails and you really want to put it to the test, boot state of the art. This thing does an Uzi on your uh, floppy drive. And it's amazing what it does, and my keyboard lights are off just a little bit. This should work perfectly because it's a PAL demo, and my Amiga can run it. Whoop. So we've all seen this demo 2,897 million times, 
and it will work fine on this Amiga 500. Number one, because it's in PAL. Number two, because it's an Amiga 500, unaccelerated, OCS, ECS type chipset thing, and it'll work fine. If I slap this in any other of my accelerated Amigas, even with turning CPU cache off, one out of five times it might boot. Hear that? That's what I'm talking about. You watch your floppy drive, this thing just gets a run for its money the whole demo long, and you'll hear it. I'll leave the volume down. The volume works. Proper, proper uh, speed of the demo. But this floppy drive is on constantly, and you'll be able. There's nothing wrong with it. That's just this uh, Spaceballs group doing their coding. It's really wild. I also have Miss Pac-Man on uh, actual floppy disk. Uh, this is PAL, and it will only boot in PAL, so this works fine. But what I'm saying is, on an accelerated Amiga, you'll get bars at the top and some weird stuff. And yes, this is stretching, and it's not a precise 4x3. It's a 24-inch monitor. But as you can see, it works fine, and it'll run all the way through. Now I'm going to triple finger this bad boy, pop this disc out like it's 1987. Putting Pac-Man in. This is a newer version of Pac-Man that came out recently. I always play it. Why? I like the Miss Pac-Man versus Pac-Man. It's just better. Playing on a vintage Amiga 500 Plus from the 80s, 90s. And uh, I'm really happy with it. I use all of my Amigas. Every... Alright. So here we go. You've seen me play this 8 million times. Perfect speed. Looks just like the arcade. You've seen it a hundred times. I'm going to die because I'm trying to focus the camera. Run! I've only ever been able to make it to level 3. I'm on Popper Jerry. Oh, denied. But you get the point. So this is literally like your uh, bedroom if you were younger in the 80s. And you had an Amiga 500. This is the 500 Plus. Hell of a lot better than the Amiga 500 stock because you get two megabytes of chip RAM. And we all know that RAM is precious to us. You can do a lot more things with the hard drive add-on or other solutions that are available today like Pi Storms. And there's other options out there too like the Terrible Fire series. So keep that in mind. You can have an all-in-one solution for your Amiga 500 series. But that has been my little quick-ish take on the differences between the regular 500 OCS and the ECS 500 Plus with 2 megs of RAM now. Thanks to the wonderful people at AmigaStore.eu for having this product in stock. I looked around my normal resellers and nobody had anything, but they actually had some stuff in stock. And I got it way faster than I normally do. Normally it takes a month for me to get products from Spain. I'm being in the U.S. East Coast. Two and a half weeks. But it was only about that big. That's what she said. What do you know from funny, you bastard? So anyway, that's all I got for this quick video. Thank you guys for coming along on the journey. And until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.